Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Butterfly TV. So today I want to talk about the transition from pediatric care, so care as a child, to adult care with Turner syndrome. And just a few tips for how to prepare for that change. We've talked before about how most of the care is focused on childhood, the early years. It's focused on pediatric care. And so the shift to adulthood can feel a little stark. It can feel a little like, okay, what now? And kind of like you're trying to figure it out as you go. And so I wanna, I wanna touch on some of what we can do to prepare for that because there are things you can do to prepare ways to get ahead of that, ways to arm yourself with the right knowledge and resources to help you navigate that shift and that change and how to approach adult care. Just kind of in my experience, what's made a difference. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the care guidelines. Knowing the care guidelines really, really well is so important. Not that it's the end all be all and you don't need anything outside of that, but it's such a strong foundational start on what to pay attention to, how often for certain things, what to think about in general, like just a good start to, these are things to focus on. And I think that's a good first step to that shift. Um, one of the biggest things as an adult with Turner syndrome versus being a kid is you gotta coordinate some of those specialist type things much more. You have to advocate for yourself a lot more. You know, if something's going on, you gotta kind of be the one to speak up. And I guess that's in general, but particularly with Turner syndrome, I, my experience as a little girl was my doctors were so on top of it. Like I saw my endocrinologist on a schedule and unless there was a reason to change that schedule, I saw her. I think it was every, I think it was every six months. And so that's what I came to expect. That has not actually been something I found is discussed or talked about as an adult. Not that there's not reason to reevaluate at that point. Of course, things change, you know, so much more about your particular case. <laughs> by that age that it's understandable, it would look different. And I wanna, I wanna acknowledge that because as we're having these discussions, that is an important factor. Like a part of why it may look different is because it does look different by that age. You've learned so much more about your own personal case. So coordinating that yourself. So learning, maybe talking with your doctor and saying, hey, what do you think is good intervals for these things? Like there's there's so many different tests you could think about. There's so much to consider with what kind of screenings and scheduling for those screenings might benefit you the most. Um, because to be honest, as I've gotten older, it's also been a shift in what I pay attention to. There might be screenings I had very often as a kid that I don't find as necessary now. Like I feel pretty confident in that area right now. And if nothing's going on, then I feel okay. Now, that's not to say getting complacent is okay because things can always shift. Just to say this could look very different, you know, from what you had as a kid or what might typically be recommended. Just getting set a plan for this is, these are the screenings we're gonna focus on and these are the intervals we want them. So you know, okay, every six months, I need a blood panel for these things or an echo here. Um, every year I need this testing. And so you can know, okay, it's about every this so often that I wanna check in on that and have that. And of course, there's gonna be differences in what that might be, depending on what's going on with you. So I'm not gonna recommend anything at all because one, I am not giving medical advice. I am simply sharing my experiences and what I learned. And two, it's so individual, there's no way I could recommend anything because you need to talk to your doctor and find out what would be best for you. Thing that this brought up for me a lot was just being even more of my own advocate. Like I've got to use my voice even more 
because to some extent, it can feel when you shift from childcare to adult care, hey, we got you to this age, you're doing really well, you're good. Like you did really good and there's no active problem to like put out, like to deal with and address. There's no fire calling attention and it can feel like a little bit of whiplash for how closely they were paying attention to certain concerns. This is a whole nuanced, deep discussion and I don't want to, I don't want to bring it down too simplified and make generalizations. So I want to be careful with giving that impression. But certainly there is a contrast you experience. At least I did. And I, I have heard some stories from other women also who felt a contrast too to how child care looked versus adult care and shifting. Um, and so I think one of the biggest ways you can prepare for adult care as a Turner syndrome woman is being really good at advocating for yourself and speaking up with concerns, asking the questions you have and not holding back in that way, not being afraid to, not being shy about it and really making sure that you understand what's going on and that if you see something that you have questions about or concerns about that you say something because it is really important as we get into adult care where it can be a little bit of more self-sufficiency that we really have a good understand. I mean, I always say you should have a good understanding, but particularly as an adult, you need to know how to make sure you're informed. Resor finding good resources, asking detailed questions when you have them to your doctors, knowing what resources are available, knowing what specialists might be available and helpful is a part of that. Knowing when to shift to a specialist can be important. Like I knew for my hormones, I knew I personally felt more comfortable with an endocrinologist. They're going to just, in my experience, what I wanted was I wanted to work with an endocrinologist in that way. And so that's what I did. That's important to be able to navigate. Um, I know this all sounds like a lot of pressure and I don't want to scare you guys. I just think these are things that even if somebody had just planted in my head, hey, maybe understand your specialists you want a little more. Hey, maybe know what screenings you should be having and how often you should be having them a little more. Hey, maybe ask those questions so you know how to approach it and you can ask for what you feel like you need. Um, because honestly, as an adult especially, we have had to... I have had to be my own advocate in the way of I know how I'm feeling and they don't. Like they have their experience, but I'm the one feeling and going through everything. So I know better than anybody else in my care team what's going on internally with me. Like I I know how I'm feeling. I know when I feel off. I know how whatever medication I'm on or things I'm going through that I know how they're making me feel. And that's important knowledge and understanding and should not be discounted. I have had times where I felt off, my doctor brushed it aside and didn't think it was anything and I was right, like there was something off. And so I'm very glad I spoke up for myself and got a second opinion. I'm very glad I didn't let myself just forget it and ignore it and say, ah, they said it's nothing, it's probably nothing because she didn't know how off I felt. She was not experiencing that. And so it's situations like that, that you kind of, you have to be more prepared for going into adult care with Turner syndrome than as a child. I think you always have to be your own advocate, but for particularly with adult care, it's at a different level than as a child. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other thoughts, personal experiences, stories you would like to share about shifting from pediatric care to adult care, I would love to hear it. Leave it in the comments below. Um, and I hope this was helpful for you if you are working on making this shift or you're a parent trying to help your daughter make this shift and 
and you know it's going to be coming and so you're trying to help her prepare. I, I hope this was helpful if you have any other topics within this or anything specific, any specific questions you would like to see me talk about, leave it in the comments below as well. And if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and chime the bell so that uh, you get notifications when the videos come out. And if you enjoy talking about Turner Syndrome, keep hanging out because we talk about Turner Syndrome all the time. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.